We've got to get away from the idea that it's good to go to the theater. It isn't church. There's nothing innately good about it. Most theater is still really bad. It has to appeal to people who do jobs and have lives. Theater about theater is the most awful terminal nonsense. Now, this is a quote from a 2009 interview with The Guardian with Mike Bartlett. And I like this quote to start off this presentation because I really feel like it shows that Mike Bartlett is a no-nonsense type of man and playwright, which we clearly saw through his show Cock that we read for this week's class. So today my goal is to inform you about the playwright Mike Bartlett and hope that you appreciate this award-winning playwright more. So in preparation for today's speech, I read the play Cock. I read numerous articles about Mike Bartlett, and I also read and watched interviews with Mike Bartlett. So today I'll be covering three main points. I'll be covering Mike Bartlett's life and career. I'll be going over his writing philosophy, or his writing process, I'm sorry, and then I'll finish off with his writing philosophy. So to help, I always think it's important when you learn about a new subject to kind of learn about the basics. So in this case, it'll be Mike Bartlett's life and career. All right. So I've selected three main things to talk to you guys about today about his life and career. I'm going to talk about his early life and his education. I'm going to talk about his early career and then what he's done after that. So there was one particular article and interview by The Guardian with Mike Bartlett that I got most of my information about his early life from. Um, and from this source, I learned that Mike Bartlett grew up and was born in Abingdon, England, um, which is a city right outside of Oxford. Um, his mother was a headmistress and his father was a psychologist. And he attended the University of Leeds in England, where he studied both English and theater studies. And while in university, he acted, wrote, and uh, directed plays. So after he completed his degree, he and a group of friends moved to London and started a group called the Apathists, to which he said about the name, I have to disown the name. The first rule is don't have an ironic name. Nobody will get it. And so this group would meet monthly and they would create short plays that they put on in the theater in London called the Theater 503. So although there is not a lot of information about Mike Bartlett's early life and his, his beginnings, I thought it was important to note that he is formally educated in theater and that he has always had a passion for theater since a young age. So I thought it would be helpful to hear about uh, Mike Bartlett's beginnings were as a playwright and screenwriter. So most of my information for this section I found on his profile on his agency's website as well as his IMDb page. So Bartlett began his career um, creating original work not only for the stage but also for the radio. So his first radio play was a 15-minute drama called The Family Man, which premiered on BBC Radio 4 in 2006. And Bartlett continued to write pieces for the radio and for the stage, with his most recent radio piece, The Core, in 2011, all the while also writing full-length shows for the stage. So the play that we read for this week, Cock, is actually Bartlett's only his fourth full-length show he had ever written. And since then, he has written 14 other full-length shows for the stage. And in 2012, he began writing for television. He's also a screenwriter. So this information about Bartlett's beginnings as a playwright shows you that he's not afraid to use any medium available to him to show his artistic expression and get his work out there. So since the positive response of his early work Bartlett only went up in that he received many awards for his newer works. So according to a 2016 BBC News article, for playwright Mike Bartlett, 2015 was a remarkable year. In the spring came Twin Olivier Awards, one for his future history play, King Charles III, and the other for the short drama, Bull. Charles III crossed the Atlantic to Broadway, while at home, the five-part BBC One drama, Dr. Foster, impressed audiences and critics. In 12 months, Mike Bartlett had become one of the highest profile dramatists around, an achievement he puts down mainly to lots of work. So I chose this information to give you guys some idea of the sheer amount of work that Mike Bartlett puts out in a year and how active he is as a playwright and he wants to get his word out there. 
So now that you guys know a little bit more about Mike Bartlett's life and career, I'd like to share with you some key points about his writing process. So Mike Bartlett has a very diverse resume of works, but he has a unifying process that he goes through through all of his writings. So today I'm going to mention three things about his process. I'm going to mention his use of relationships in his shows. I'm going to mention the way his characters speak and also what his plays are about. So an important aspect of Bartlett's writing process is making sure he writes for a modern audience but also creates modern relationships in his works. So a 2011 Prospect Magazine article commented on Bartlett's ability to create modern relationships in his shows for a 21st century audience. They say, Mike Bartlett's plays overflow with the symbols of modern life. Images pour out of widescreen TVs, characters check emails on iPads, play games on iPhones, hop on planes, tweet, text, check Facebook, go clubbing, grab coffee at Starbucks. But Bartlett's aim is more ambitious than scattering his work with the latest Apple products and name-checking Twitter. To this, Bartlett says, in the past, if you wanted to speak to someone, you had to go to their room and have a meeting. Now, we do so, so much of that virtually. So when you have five people in a room, what a brilliant place for a scene. Now it happens over email and the whole thing is atomized and mixed up. I really want to find a theater that can reflect that landscape. Forms that represent what it feels like to live now. So I like this quote, mainly because we get to hear Bartlett speak on his own work, but which is his whole process of taking the real world and then creating heightened drama within that world. We clearly see that in his show Cop with the note of having no set and no props, just so that the action really shines through and the relationship with the characters is what is really focused on in his work. So as we discovered when we read the play for this week, Bartlett's characters speak in a very distinct way. <laughs> So, in the same The Guardian article from 2009, said this about the way that Bartlett's characters speak. In Bartlett's writing, speech tumbles from characters struggling to make themselves understood. It's good to know what your audience have been watching the other four nights of the week, Bartlett says, explaining his rapid style. If you're still going at theater in the 1970s speed and your audience has been watching The Wire, then your play is going to seem pretty slow. So I like this quote because it has Bartlett speaking on his own writing style with his characters, but it also shows how current entertainment styles influence his work. And so he always wants to keep up to date with how entertainment is being portrayed at that time. So lastly, Bartlett's process includes analyzing what he hears around him and kind of the experiences that he goes through through life. And that really influences what he, his shows are about. So when asked in the 2013 interview with the New York Metro about what inspired him to write the play, Cobb, Bartlett responded, I had noticed there were a lot of people I knew who would say they were gay or say they were straight, but had experiences that were opposite of that. And then I went to Mexico with a playwrights exchange at the Royal Court Theater. I was fascinated that in Mexico they still do cockfights and they still do bullfights. So I chose this quote because I think it's really interesting how perceptive Bartlett is to the world around him, and kind of how what he sees in the world affects and influences his works at the time. So now that you know a little bit more about Mike Bartlett's writing process, I'd like to move on to my final point, which is about his writing philosophy. Ah, my philosophy. <laughs> so, as you might imagine, based on what we've talked about so far, he has very unique writing process, so he can, of course, have a very unique writing philosophy. So the three points about his philosophy that I will talk about today are his writing plays that are relevant, not adding any type of fluff, and his commenting on British culture. So a 2011 Prospect Magazine article commented on Bartlett's ability to create theater about the now. So it wasn't until he was 16 watching a show by the playwright Mark Ravenhill, that Bartlett started thinking seriously about working in theater. I'd seen so many plays at school by this point, but that was the first time I'd seen a play by a writer who wasn't dead or wasn't much older like Harold Pinter, Bartlett remarks. I remember thinking, I don't understand why all plays aren't like this. Why are so many plays set in the past? So I like this quote 
because we clearly see that in his show Cock that we read for this week, in that although the play was written in 2009, the subject matter of the show really transcends time in that it is still a very relevant topic that we could talk about today and we've had a discussion in class about. So another aspect of Bartlett's philosophy involves writing only what a show needs. So Susanna Fielding, who was a cast member of the original cast of his show, King Charles III, said this about King Charles III. Mike was, has written a short, but very intense and precise play. Audiences have already told us that an hour is as long as they can take and is meant as a compliment. So the idea having that everything the show having everything that it needs can be applied to all of Bartlett's work. I mean, starting from his beginnings as writing 15 minute radio shows in that everything has to fit in that one time slot on radio. So everything has to be very concise and precise. And just in his show Cock that we just read, everything needed to be there. It didn't seem like any scenes were unnecessary in any way. And so, and so finally, a vital aspect of Mike Bartlett's plays and writing involves commenting on the world around him. So from the same Prospect Magazine article that I mentioned earlier, uh, this is what they said about Bartlett's ability to comment unbiasedly about the world around him, specifically British culture. I think the only choice is where your focus is, Bartlett says. Do you write your play thinking about other plays? Or do you look out the window and say, my play is about that? Whatever the world is, that's what I'm after. Bartlett's plays are political, but they are not manifestos. He is reluctant to set out his beliefs too explicitly, both in interviews and in plays. So I love this comment specifically because it shows how Bartlett gets his inspiration and how that ultimately influences how he executes his shows and how he writes about them. And the comments about him being unbiased in his interviews and plays, I did read very many interviews, and he never wanted to say anything too definitively about his shows or what they're about or what they meant, because he wanted to leave that open for people to kind of interpret for themselves. So these are three uh, philosophy elements of Mike Bartlett's approach to writing. I wanted to tell you guys about this because I thought it would give you insight on not only Mike Bartlett's personality, but his unique way of, of gaining inspiration for his shows and then ultimately executing them. So in conclusion, my goal today was to talk to you guys about the playwright Mike Bartlett, um, who is the author of Cock, among many other shows. Uh, I've talked to you about three main points. I've talked to you about his life and career. I've talked about his writing process. And I finished off with some points about his writing philosophy. And so what I'd like you to remember from today's speech is how Mike Bartlett's unique and unbiased commentary and approach to his writing, as well as his long-standing commitment that he's had to the art of theater. So my final quote that I'm going to leave you guys off with is from a 2011 Prospect Magazine article, and it's talking about Mike Bartlett himself and also his works. And they say, Taken together, Bartlett's plays conjure up an image of the author as cool, young, and sharp. In reality, he is reassuringly open, warm, and generous. Tall and balding with his uncultivated stubble, loose-fitting jeans, and rumpled shirts, he looks like a cross between Ricky Gervais and Elaine de Bonham. Thank you. <laughs>